everybody bless the Lord oh my soul bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me that is within me bless his oh come on and bless his name this morning He has done great things. Come on, let's tell the Lord He has done great things. He has done great things. He's done great things. If you know God has done great things, come on, lift your voice and say, Great things. He has done great things. He's done great things. Great things. Bless his holy name. Come on, lift your voice and just say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All over the building this morning, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. One more time and then we'll go on. Come on, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, yeah. Bless his holy name. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise on this morning. Come on, give God some praise on this morning. If the Lord been good to you, you ought to praise him. Praise him with the lips, the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah. Good morning to our clergy, church family, and friends. I give you your announcements for this week, Sunday, November the 17th. Siloam Baptist Church Ministry Fair will be held immediately following service on Sunday, November 17th. Stop by and explore the many opportunities for the service and ministry at Siloam. Single Women's Ministry will meet for fellowship Saturday, November the 23rd at 9.30 a.m. Is that here at the church or? Okay. Here at the church. Sisters of Siloam are hosting a Women's Christmas Fellowship Luncheon on December 7th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Please register, bring a gift, and take a gift. Minimum is $5. Friendly reminder to the ladies attendance the women's retreat in March 2025. Thank you for meeting the, the deposit deadline. Please continue to make periodic payments to reduce your outstanding balance. And as we give thanks to God for the harvest of, of blessings we have received this year, the church office will be closed the week of November 25th, and we wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. And now we will have a special announcement by Deacon Barry, and then following Deacon Barry, we will have Pastor Randy with a Veterans Day acknowledgement. Good morning, everyone. 
God bless you all. Hey, really quickly, I want to draw attention um, to something that uh, we're very excited about within our men's ministry, Amen. okay? And um, something that has been long, long in the planning, and it's finally coming to fruition. So uh, next year, 2025, in the fall, we are going to be par partnering with uh, Suburban Baptist Association for the first of many, the first annual SBA men's retreat. Okay, this retreat's going to be held September 5th through the 7th, so it's a weekend, brothers, and it's going to be at Black Rock uh, Resort Center. And if you've never been there, just ask a woman, <laughs> because, because our women have been going there for 15 years, whatever, and, and it's and it's been a blessing to them, and it's going to be a blessing to us. The thing that's, that I'm so gratified about this is it's not a Siloam thing, right? It is a church thing. Amen. So there are, if you're not aware, there are over 21 churches, 21 plus churches in the Suburban Baptist Association, uh, which we are a part of and have been for decades, and we're rebooting after the pandemic. The men's ministry is rebooting, the women's auxiliary is rebooting, everything, but we're focused on the men. So uh, w w there was a posting in Realm, um, but if you didn't see it, this is what you need to do. You can read the, the, uh, the Realm post. There's information in there as well as a link to our, our, our website where you can download additional information about the logistics, the cost, the food, all the things that you're interested in knowing about men and, um, and who to contact, which is me. The second, or if you don't want to do that, you can go directly out to our website, which you see up there, siloambc.org forward slash men. And there is, a, there is a information there and you can download a packet that gives you everything that you need to know about it. Or if you don't want to do that, see me after church downstairs during the ministry fair and I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. The key thing here is you can't sit on this, right? You can't sit on this because of a lot of, situ a lot of things and because there's over 20 churches involved, there's very limited space. So if you think you want to go, you got to commit, All and right. you got to commit early. Right. Um, we are actually setting as a deadline for the first payment next Sunday. Now, there may be seats afterwards, but I can't guarantee that. What I can guarantee is that if you make your commitment by next Sunday, you will have a secured spot there. The down payment's $100, right? So that's not bad. You know, take away the coffee, take away the takeout at uh, your favorite eatery or what have you, and, and you've got that. If you've got a challenge with that, let me know. Okay, we'll work something out. So this is really important. Uh, we're going to have speakers. We're going to have fellowship. We're going to have fun. Um, it's going to be a great time, and I would, I would hate not to see those who need to be there, who want to be there, not there. So talk to me afterwards and, um, and, and uh, downstairs, and I'll give you all the information that you need. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, brothers. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on. I thought we were awake this morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. We are grateful to the Lord for our being here on this beautiful uh, Sunday morning. And I'm thankful to God for all the things that the Lord is doing in our lives. I want to pay uh, particular attention and tribute to every man, every woman that has that is currently serving or you have served in the military, would you please stand up? Every male, every female. If you have currently served or you're serving now, we salute you. Thank you, as everybody says, thank you for your service. 
Uh, we know that on uh, last Monday was Veterans Day, and I'm just grateful to God that we have men and women in our church that have faithfully uh, served in a particular branch of service for the armed forces. We salute you this morning. Amen. And may God continue to bless you real good. Amen. Okay, let me, be, let me be among the first. One, two, three, four, five, but count me in. That's all I'm saying. Just count me in that number. Amen. Amen. God bless. Uh, all the men, all the men of Siloam, you heard, you heard the announcement. And, and uh, if, you're, if you want to go, as Deacon Barry said, uh, see him or see me after the morning service and we'll, we'll talk. Amen. Amen. Um, I don't know, but uh, it's, it's getting colder during the night, and um, even though some of y'all sleep with your windows open, it's still cold, and uh, I'm, I'm not a cold type of person. Hello, somebody. Now, understand, y'all, I ain't fussing at nobody. I'm not fussing at anybody. But it is too cold in here. Amen. So if you have to on Sunday night or Saturday night, turn the heat on, please do. Because most of, most of us, most of us in here are seniors. And if you're like Pastor Randy, I don't like to be cold. Amen. Now I went back in to put my coat on. Uh, but I'm going to still praise him. I'm going to still praise him. I'm going to still praise him. Anybody want to praise the Lord today? Come on, does anybody want to praise him this morning? If you want to praise him, just give him a wave offering on today. Because isn't the Lord good? I said, isn't the Lord good? God is merciful. And God is kind. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. We're in a ministry moment. Is that where we're at? No. Opening scripture and prayer, correct? Yeah. All right. We're going to have the opening scripture and the prayer by, by uh, Sister Zayana Shippen. Give her a hand as she comes. Good morning, Pastor Randy of the Nicole Church family and friends. Today I will be reading from Psalms 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day as we enter with thanksgiving in our hearts to give your honor, worship, and praise. I ask you, I ask that you bless this service, bless the word, that someone might give their life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Lamar. We have ministry moment by Minister Alfini Mays. Bless the Lord. Because y'all got a little quiet in here. I know it's cold in here, but I know you got some heat up in you. Good morning. For those that don't know me, I'm Minister Alfini. If you would mind standing for the reading of the word of God, we're coming from Matthew 16, verses 26 through 20, no, verses 24 through 25. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Father, Lord God, I just come to you this morning, Father, Lord God, that you will decrease me, that you will be increased in me. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Father, Lord God. So use me, Father, Lord God, that your word will go forth, Father, Lord God. Not my word, Father, Lord God, but what you have prepared for your people to hear. So I bless it, Father, Lord God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. The topic God gave me is, whose cross are you carrying? I'm going to ask you again. Whose cross are you carrying? God has already bore it all. He took it to the cross. All our sins. So whose cross are you carrying? Do you not understand what it means? Pick up your cross and follow me. Jesus is saying every sin that holds you in bondage, bondage, he wants you to let it go at his feet. You cannot carry a cross that is weighing you down. A cross is heavy. Did you see Jesus? When you read his word, the cross, it's like this. He needed someone to help him and pick it up, which means it's weight in that cross. God is saying in order for you to walk with him and alongside of him, you have to let go of hatred, loneliness. You have to forgive your loved ones. Those that you said that you would never speak to again, speak to again. He has forgiven you. So why have you not forgiven them? You have to forgive. Take your sins to the cross. To the cross. Jesus wants you to live a surrendered life. You can't surrender what you don't know, what you're not giving up. You come week after week, day after day. You even sit by some loved ones that you don't even look at. How is that so? But we call ourselves God-fearing, Christians. The word of the Lord says, pick up your cross and follow me. Do you not understand that means to die? You have to die of this world. Let go of everything that holds you down that God will turn away from. 
so that you can pick up the spirit of the living God. That is life. He wants you to live a life abundantly. And that is what he is calling us to. The call is not to just die, but the call is to live. He wants you to live today and tomorrow in eternity. So pick up your cross. Don't turn to the world. Turn to the Father. I'm going to leave you with this. I had another scripture because it closes out what God wants you to do. Now understand that we must follow the Father. Uh-huh. Matthew 11, 28 and 30 says, Come unto me, all ye, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest upon your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Amen. You can still put your hands together. Even as they come up, you can still put your hands together. How many of y'all know that God is not a myth? Oh, no, 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 no. He's not a myth. Nor is he a fairy tale. But God is real. Huh? Come on, put your hands together and give him and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and put your hands together and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and put your hands together and tell the Lord thank you. Come on and tell him thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, come on, hey, hey, hey. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Come on, tell him, thank you. Come on, tell him, thank you. Hey. Come on. Uh, uh, you don't want to be, you don't want to be DOA, do you? You don't want to be dead on arrival, do you? The God that I serve is a living God. All right. Huh? He's a spirit. And they that worship him shall worship him how? Hi. In spirit and in truth. Mm. Are we ready to give him the highest praise this morning? Are you ready to give God the highest praise this morning? Because he is worthy to be lifted up.
him up in here today. Because God is good and worthy to be praised. Do you know that God is good and worthy to be praised because your mercy endureth forever and ever and ever.
He's been too good. Let the Holy Ghost have his way. He's been too good. Too good. I know that's mm. right. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, some of us know. Hallelujah. When you were waiting on that job. When you was waiting for that doctor's report. You lay down and stood before God, lay prostrate before God, and prayed to God, and He answered. And when He answered, He's too. When He answered, someone's forgot what He did, but He's been too good to us for us to sit down on Him and forget what He did. I'm not gonna throw the fight. I'm not gonna throw the fight. He's been too good. Too good. Yes, sir. I'll sit here and get indignant. I don't have no hair to begin with. I get indignant for him. I get ugly for him. Because he's been good, Sister Andy. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I know what I'm talking about. Mm. Yes, sir. Oh. Uh. He's been too good, y'all. He's been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Mm. This is how we do here. Huh. This is how we do here. Well, <laughs> welcome to all the visitors. Ah, woo. Gotta come back down now. That's all right. No, no, that's all right. Yes. In the sanctuary and online. This is the Siloam Baptist Church, 1329 Willow Street. Somebody say amen, Norristown, Pennsylvania. Yes, this is the church of God's hope and healing and, and wholeness. Yes, feel free to come in, clap your hands, stomp your feet. Feel free to pray, feel free to pay in the name of the Lord Jesus. If you're online and you're tuning in from us virtually, Feel, come on in virtually, open your heart, and let the spirit of the Lord manifest itself inside your soul. Let the spirit of the Lord penetrate inside your soul. And I promise you, I guarantee you, that you will not be the same. If you allow the Lord to come in into your heart, you will not be the same afterwards. He'll renew, he'll restore. He'll bring to you joy that no materialistic thing can, can bring. Ah, we just want to welcome you. Hallelujah. Ah. Now we're going to have the offering appeal and a prayer by Aiden Robinson and David Robinson. Give them a hand as they come forward. Give them a hand. Good morning. Good morning. For God love, love a person who gives cheerfully. Amen. 
Second, Caliphate 9, 7B. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for all those who are giving cheerfully today. Amen. Amen, amen. May we stand and follow the directions of the ushers. of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we give unto thee all things. And of thine own have Amen. for selections from the choir.
while the uh, young folks are getting themselves together to, to minister to us, I want to announce officially to the church to be in prayer for the Ginyard family. Uh, Sister Cynthia, uh, be in prayer for Brother Otis and the family. Amen? Amen. Amen. selection that the choir is going to sing. I'm going to give you a little background on how we came across the song. So it was a third Sunday a few months ago and Aiden just happened to look in the hymnal and said, Miss Nicole, can you sing this song? I said it to myself and I said to him, I know this song. <laughs> I remember singing this song when I was your age. 
or maybe a little older. So he said, well, can we sing it? And I said, we sure can. So I hope you all reflect on this song as a child picked this one out for us today.
my all in all, out of the mouth of babes. Mm. My God, my God. My brother was talking about the goodness of the Lord a little bit uh -huh. ago. And I don't know about y'all, but that really got good to me. Because we serve a good, good father. And the, the song came to me, and I was trying to flag him down, but it's all right. It says, Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't thank you enough. I owe you my life. I can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good. You've been so good to me. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't thank you enough. I tried cause you've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good to me. If you know that the Lord's been good to you, can you just clap your hands? Wave them if you don't want to clap. Open up your mouth you not to be silent on God. Now, your praise don't have to look like my praise, but you don't want to get caught in a place of silence. Why? Because the word lets us know if we don't cry out, the rock is going to cry out on our behalf. And I don't want no rock crying out for me. So we give God all the glory and all of the honor, and all of the praise, because he's so, so good. He's so, so open. So many ways you made. So many times you've healed me. He's been better than good to me. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you made. So many times you've healed me. Better than good to me. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many times you've healed me. You've been so good. Can you tell that to your father? You've been so good. Oh Lord, you've been so good to me. Hallelujah. To God be the glory for his wondrous works. You can sit, you can sit if you're able. God is so faithful and wonderful. And just like my brother said, I'm not tired of praising him yet. The Lord has brought each and every one of us a mighty long way. And though the things of this world would try to make us weary, I will never allow myself to get weary of praising God. Because in the middle of the storm, the Lord tells me that my praise is a weapon. Yeah. And I can find strength and rejuvenation in my praise. And so I give God all the glory and the honor just a quick announcement before I get into this message. So uh, just a friendly reminder, because I don't want everybody to leave and rush out of here. We've got the ministry fair downstairs before we leave. So we want you to come down and learn about the different ministries and things that are happening in the church. Amen. But I got permission from pastor to announce a new ministry that is going to be formed starting now. We are launching a young adult ministry here at Siloam Baptist Church. 
This young adult ministry is for ages 18 to 34. Now you might say, though, that's kind of a big gap. Well, it's broken down into two parts, similar to the way our youth ministry is broken down with the children and the teens. We've got our 18 to roughly 24, 25, which are our emerging adults. These are the ones who are coming out of high school with their newfound freedom. They done turned 18, and the world told them that they were an adult. And while they may be adult in age, they still have some learning to do. And so we want to partner with them as they explore this newfound freedom so that we can encourage them that while they're trying it to stay close to Christ. With the uh, age 26 to 34, that is our young adults. Those are the ones, many of them are starting families, they're dating, they're getting married, their careers are blossoming, all of these things. We want to do the same for them. We want to partner with them. So when you come downstairs and if you feel like you want to work, maybe the kids wasn't your thing. Maybe the small children and the teenagers wasn't for you. But we're going to need help with our young adult ministry. Um, I've got Tamara and Audrey who are going to be working as co-leaders alongside of me to execute that, but we are excited to be launching that. And so with that, today's message uh, is going to minister, hopefully, to everyone, but especially to our young adults. And so I've sent the school-age children downstairs. We normally don't send them downstairs on Thursday, Sunday, but today I made an exception. So if you don't mind standing with me for the reading God of God's word, we're going to have a discussion today on the new man, the new man. And we're going to be reading out of Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Ooh, we bless your name. Them kids did a good worship. And I love that. We are teaching them, training them up in how to worship God. And I love that for them and for us because they are the now of this church. So Ephesians chapter 4, starting down at verse 17, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. It says, This I say, therefore... And testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Father God, we so graciously thank you for your presence being here with us today. God, I ask now, Lord, that you would hide me in your presence, God, and that you would allow me to decrease and you to increase. Father God, that you would be glorified soil. Lord God, that you would touch the hearts of the people, Lord God, and even before they close themselves off, that you would just minister your love and your peace to them, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, and we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So in doing my research, I learned that this letter to Ephesus is what we can classify as a general letter. It was written to encourage this body of believers in the truth of Christ to give them knowledge that would help them to be good followers of Christ. This is unlike many of Paul's other writings, which were written to specific churches and they were written to solve a problem or to resolve a a dispute about an issue that was existing among the believers. In this letter, Paul is not addressing any specific issue with the doctrine of Christ, but he is teaching the body how we should live in Christ. now. Now, in this particular passage of scripture, Paul is discussing the state of the Gentiles in Ephesus, which is similar to the state of many believers and non-believers today. In verse 19, Paul describes a desensitized people who have been given over to the ways of the world. This numbness in the people comes not from 
um, comes from not knowing who Jesus really is. Having not personally experienced the power of the true and living God, the people are disconnected, ignorant, and blind to what a life in Christ is really about. Due to this lack of truly knowing Christ, Paul says the result is a numbness which leads to lustful behaviors. It leads to being greedy and engaging in unclean behaviors. It is ultimately the door for unchecked sin. Now, as I sat with this particular scripture, it felt a little bit judgmental. And the idea of coming here to preach it today made me feel very uncomfortable. But the longer I sat there, I found myself in the scripture. And God and I began to have a remember when conversation. So, so for the sake of the kingdom, I would like to invite you into this remember when conversation that I had with God. I would like to, and pastor knows I don't like to do this, but he going to pray for me while I'm up here. I would like to have a vulnerable and translucent conversation about what God has done for me. So you may say, well, why translucent and not transparent? What's the difference? Well, transparent is when you can see all the way through. If you think about glass, it's clear. You could just see. You can see who's in a room, what they're doing. You can see all of the details. But translucent is a little bit different. Come on now. That level of transparency, that level of intimacy, that's not for the masses. Amen. We got to learn to stop being so transparent and start being translucent. Now, what is translucent? It's basically the same thing except with the glass. You know that privacy screen that goes over it where you can like see that there's something or someone in there, but you can't tell. You can't see the details, but you can see a little bit. Well, I'm going to be translucent. I'm going to let y'all see a little bit. Amen. So as I share, I challenge you to listen without judgment and with an open heart. So a little bit about me. I grew up in church and my biological father, who at this point has gone on to be with the Lord, he was a youth minister. It just must run in the in the family. Right. He served the church. Uh, he said he sang he participated he directed me in the choir we would have lots of fun times in the car listen, listening and worshiping and my parents they held bible studies at their home so they would do these like you know kind of how we have our life groups and things like that they would do those things and they would you know set up in the living room and then all the kids we would go set up in the room and they would turn on gospel bill does anybody remember gospel bill Praise the Lord. Only one, if y'all didn't see Gospel Bill as a kid, you missed out, okay? Because Gospel Bill was it. So you could go look that up when you get home. But Gospel Bill um, was a, a Christian, uh, I guess, countryman that they, they it was a show that kind of like taught kids about Christ. It was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, but my parents served in ministry. And so while I was raised to believe in God, and I was raised to believe that Jesus is the son of God who died for my sins. The emphasis of God's character was that he is a God who judges. Mm. Mm. Come on now. It was heavily impressed upon me from my youth when I was growing up that there was a whole list of things that I just should not do. I shouldn't engage in sexual activity before marriage. Uh -huh. I shouldn't curse. I shouldn't talk back to my parents and disobey. I shouldn't this, that, or the third. It was a whole lot of what I shouldn't be doing because if you do these things, God is going to be mad at you. Listen, listen, listen. If you do these things, God is not, he's not going to be pleased, right? So my head was full of all of the rules and regulations that I had to follow to stay in God's good graces. So then, when I was about seven or eight years old, being touched by another little girl who was a few years older than me, I didn't say one word. Mm -hmm. well, well. I kept that all to myself. I was 29 years old when I first ever told anybody what even happened to me. And it was in that moment that I learned that I was molested. As a kid, I did not have language for what happened to me. I only knew that I did something that would make God mad at me, and so I couldn't tell anyone. Well, well. 
An unfortunate outcome of being molested, not once but twice, was that it awakened things in my body that my mind could not comprehend. Because I knew sex outside of marriage was a sin, I really couldn't talk to my parents about these things that I was feeling or thinking, which left me to learn it all from the world. That's a dangerous place to be. So I spent the, the better part of middle school and high school fighting my flesh hard and being confused, trying to make sure that I didn't sin against God anymore. But then my parents got divorced and I was utterly confused. And here's why, because how could these people, I love my parents, I love you mommy, okay, listen, but how could you be raising me to understand that God is a judge and he doesn't want us to sin and all of these hard facts that I learned about sin and then you turn around and you blatantly sin. As a child, watching my parents sin and only understanding God to be a God of judgment I could not fathom it. I couldn't see and I didn't see any remorse in their decision. I didn't see repentance. I just saw two people who I thought loved each other be angry and mean to each other to the point where they couldn't even speak to one another. This confusion led to personal chaos. And quite frankly, I stopped fighting my flesh. All of that work I was trying to do to, to live the way I thought I was supposed to live, I just, I was over it. I was about uh, 12, 13 at this time. And so I figured if my parents could freely sin, why should I try not to? So this led to an array of issues. I started cussing. Mm-hmm, yes, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm delivered now. And hanging with people that I had no business hanging with. I allowed myself to be tempted into losing my virginity, and at the age 16, I got pregnant, and I had an abortion, and I never told my parents. Well, well. Somebody say secrets. You see, I had two other girl cousins by this point who were older than me, and both of them had gotten pregnant and had children, and it was just now all throughout the family, like, she better not get pregnant. Like, like the, to hear my parents say, you better not this, and you better not that, and you're not going to embarrass me, and all of, all of the stuff that comes with that. So I did what I thought was the right thing to do to spare my parents of the embarrassment because I was ashamed. So... When I was a senior, I was raped by a boy who just didn't understand the meaning of the word no. So I pray that our young men learn when somebody says no, the answer is no. And the same goes for our ladies because it's not always the boys who are doing those kinds of things. Amen. But because I said no but didn't fight or push him off me, I figured it was agreement. And so I was 29 when I learned that it was an agreement, that no actually means no, and I'm entitled to change my mind. So all the while these things are happening, and I just know I'm disappointing God. And as I prepared to head to college, I asked God if he would give me a moment, almost as if I could say, like, Lord, could you just look the other way? While I do, because at this point, like, I'm, I'm in it, but I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong because my parents have already put in me all of these things that are wrong. So I know that what I'm doing is not the right behavior. But I ask God if you could just turn away for a moment and let me have this fun. Let me do what I think I want to do. Because I don't, I don't know, many of you know me, and if you do, you know I'm a good planner. I had a plan for my life. Based on the fact that my parents got divorced, I said, I'm never getting married. I'm going to grow up. I'm going to have kids by age this, and I'm going to do this, this. And I had a plan for my life. It wasn't God's plan. It was Nicole's plan. So I went off, and I decided to try to live this plan. So when I got to college, I picked up the habit of smoking marijuana. Now, I had boundaries, but it didn't really matter because I was smoking on a regular basis. I didn't go to school, you know, to class high or anything like that, but I did it in my recreational free time. And the reality was that I was smoking as a way to cope with all of the secrets that I was trying to hide from everybody who was around me. So in addition to this, 
I was essentially living my life by the horoscopes. I would wake up in the morning, look up the horoscope for the day to see what, okay, what does it say today's going to be like? <laughs> I wasn't praying. I wasn't asking God. I was looking for the horoscope. As I dated and made friends, I would go and I would look and see, okay, well, he's a this and I'm a this. What does it say about this? Oh, we're compatible like this. Oh, no. And I would really make decisions about friendships and dating relationships based on the horoscopes. And my, 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 uh, my bonus dad said to me one day, he said, Nicole, why do you keep reading those things? Don't you hear it? Horoscopes. And I was like, oh, dad. <laughs> I said, I didn't even, I didn't even think of it that way because I, I was just wound up in the astrology. Everybody was doing it. That's what the world lived by, and we still see it today. Scorpio season, Libra season, Taurus season. And listen, they really get into these horoscopes and astrological signs. And let me, let me just say this for those of you who are into it. There is some validity to the things that they are saying because even though those things are coming from a demonic place, it's coming from a spiritual realm. It's just not godly. And so they have some insight, but they don't have the full insight because they're picking up, right? You, what you got to understand is that the evil, word, evil world is ancient. The devil has been around even before this world was around. So there is ancient information that they use to put together these horoscopes and all of these things. But that's not God's plan for your life. So what I was essentially doing is I was kind of giving myself over to witchcraft every single morning. Let me see what the devil got to say about my day on today. So the short version is that I was living my life in a way where I had put God out of my mind. I asked him to leave me alone. Now, here's the thing. I do not recommend anybody do what I did and ask God for a reprieve, because it, it just was outside of the realm of safety. I know that now, and so I want you to take my advice now. Don't do that. But let me tell you how good God really is. I graduated college. Three days after I graduated college, I got into an accident with a tractor trailer on 76. He, we were merging into the same lane. He clipped the backside of my car. My car spun out in, for, in front of him, and I was facing oncoming traffic at 9.15 p.m. By the grace of God, I got out unscathed, but my car was totaled. And immediately, God reminded me and said, you remember what you had said when you graduated college, you was going to come back? I was like, I remember, Lord, and as soon as I, <laughs> as soon as I got home, like, I began to, on the side of the road, like, it hit me so fast, and I just began to praise God and thank him, because I could have died. You know, like, I saw myself pass in front of that tractor trailer, and by the grace of God, the tractor trailer kept veering. Once he hit me, he knew he hit me, so he didn't try to plow through me. He kept trying to, like, veer off around me. It was God's hand that was on me in that moment. Can I just say, while I was doing what I wanted to do in college, it was God's hand that was on me when even I rejected him. It was his hand that rested on me to keep me from going too far, to keep me from losing my life, and to keep me from losing my mind. So I immediately found a church. And you know what, I'm, I'm going to say this for my teenagers and my young adults. If I knew then what I know now, I would have stayed ten toes down with Jesus. Okay, you know how they be like standing on business? I would have been standing on business for Jesus. Because I know that he's been good. So when I graduated, that's how I made my way to Norristown. I found a church. It wasn't Salome, so, okay. Not yet anyway. And it was great. I was in the church. I felt the presence of God. So I joined the church and I got baptized. And I got baptized because they told me I had to to join the church. That's why I got rebaptized in July because now I understood what it meant. But I got baptized then because that's what they, they said. You got to, you know, you come and you got to get baptized. 
So I remember one time I was in worship service and I could not lift my hands. Like every time I would try to lift my hands, that's why like now I lift my hands and I'll be so free because there was a time when I would lift my hands and it would feel like weights were just on my arms, pressing my arms, arms down. And all I could think about was everything that I did wrong. And I felt unworthy to worship a holy God. I knew how to do church because, like I said, I had been raised in church. So I joined the praise team. I started supporting other ministries. You know, I was doing my thing. I was in the church, okay? Not like kind of in the church, not just showing up on Sunday. I was in the church, but I was still doing my own thing. I call it half-stepping. I was still smoking, figuring as long as I saved it for nighttime, unwind. And that I wasn't going to church high or anything like that. I wasn't around the saints like this. I was cool. Like, and this, is, this is the stuff that your mind will try to tell you. That as long as your sin is secret and hidden, that you're good. All the while, it's eating you up on the inside. I met a man at the church. And over time, we started living together and I got pregnant. Now, I already had the guilt of my previous abortion, so I already knew there was no way that, like, it just wasn't for me. I wasn't going to do it. And so, in so doing, because I made the choice to have my child, the church made me sit down while continuing to let him serve, all because my sin was showing. Now, I will interject this. Sometimes you do got to sit down for a season. But it should be universal. If you're going to sit me down, sit him down too. Because I wasn't, just because you can see my sin doesn't mean now I'm going to apply. No, no. If someone needs to sit down, that's okay. Sometimes we need to sit our own selves down. You know you're not living right. You, you know you're in a season where things don't feel right. It's okay. It's no judgment. Just, hey, pastor, hey, so-and-so, I need to take a break. I need to get myself right with the right, Lord. Right. So, eventually I had the baby, and the church would not christen her. Y'all know who the baby is. She's back there. They would not christen her in public because she was born in sin. So, in order for me to re-engage in church ministry, I had to stand up in front of the church and confess my sin to everyone and ask for their forgiveness. Or at least that's how I perceived the action because I imagine that that's not what they intended because for them, they probably thought they were following the Bible. You know how it says that we should confess our sins one to another. So now in my maturity, I understand that that's probably what they were getting at, but the execution was all wrong. And that's not even the right interpretation, but we're going to leave that for another day. And so in that moment, Church and being with God started to feel like the same as when I was a child, very judgmental and isolating. Eventually, I ended up here at Siloam. I was 26 years old, and honestly, I didn't really find things to be a whole lot different. But somebody say, but God. God? The women of Siloam hosted a retreat on the mountain. Now, I want y'all men, because y'all men are going to this mountain. So I want you to hear the power of being on this mountain. It wasn't the mountain, but it was the presence of God that met us on the mountain. While I was there, I experienced the tangible presence of God. And I learned while I was in the room that God does judge. He does judge, but that his judgment is rooted in love. I saw the women of Siloam in love with Jesus. I saw them sharing their testimonies and worshiping God. Now, if y'all want the rest of the story of how it went, y'all go ask any one of them, and I'm sure they will let you know how it went. But it was, it was a moment where I got to see God the way he wanted me to see him. For me to see and know that, yeah, okay, God doesn't like when, these, when we do these things, but the reason why is because he loves us so much that he doesn't want there to be anything that keeps us separate or away from him. That's right. That's 
I was talking to Layla about this and I was saying how as a parent, right, we always want to teach our kids to do right. You know, if they're stealing or they're doing, they have these bad behaviors or tendencies, we try to correct them. Why? Because we don't want them to end up in jail. Why? Because that separates us from them. And it's the same thing with God. The reason why God doesn't want us to sin is because he doesn't want us to be separated from him. And so in this, in this, in this mountaintop experience where they were talking about moving forward in your faith, I got excited. It was March 2015 when this happened. And the thing is that only six months prior, I was literally ready to give it all up. I was suicidal in my mind. I was tired. I was worn out. And, th- and you know why? I was trying to get right. I kept telling myself, okay, I'm going to stop smoking. Okay, I'm going to stop having sex. Okay, I'm going to move out. I'm going to stop living with me. I'm going to do all these things that everyone is telling me that I need to do. But I was burning myself out trying to do it on my own. And I was tired and worn out. And I was like, Lord, just, just, I, I don't, I don't want to be here no more. Because this is just too much and it's too hard. So when I got a glimpse of his love, I learned that there was another way. There was a new plan. And so once I saw his love, it was all that I could see. And I'm not going to lie. I continued to experience pain and hurt. And everything didn't all of a sudden just become peaches and cream and roses because I saw him as love. But what it did is that now I understood who he really was and the veil came off of my eyes. And I began to understand that even in the midst of my mess that he's concerned about me. And I began to understand that even in the midst of my mess, whatever I can't do, God can do. It was Pastor Wes who sat with me for hours counseling me. Y'all, if y'all could see some of the faces he gave me when I was, child. But he sat with me and he endured with me as I wrestled between what I knew was right and with my flesh. And he encouraged me and he prayed for me. It was Sister Wes, who when I finally moved out of that relationship and moved into my new home, she came to my house, she sat on the couch with me, she blessed my house, and then she walked me through deliverance for the things that I've expressed with you here today. She taught me how to forgive and to let go of the past, and that's what gives me the ability now. It was the prayers of people like Sister Massey, Sister Tammy, Sister Cappy, and my good sis, Minister Alfini, and many other women here that kept me. Even when I departed from this place for a season, after I got married and we went and did, you know, the find a new church thing, even during that time when I was gone for seven years, they continued to love me. They continued to pray for me, and they even continued to show up for me as I was becoming. As I was becoming the woman that God made me to be, as I was becoming the woman that you see before you here today, this church kept on loving me. Now, the scripture talks about all of the sinful activities of the believer. But in verse 20, we get the keys. It says, but you have not so learned Christ. When you learn who Christ is, all of who you are changes. And not not the Christ that people want to paint of him being judgy or this, that, and the third, but as love, as love. The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is God's love that we need to know because when you first understand that Christ is love, you know and you become clean and all things become new. When you accept the love of Christ in your life, you are washed over with the word and you put off the old things and you put on the new. Now you might be saying, but I'm still doing the things that I used to do. Okay, that's all right. Because part of this is the beginning of a process that we like to call in the church sanctification. And I can promise you this, you will not get it all right on the first day. But as you come to understand how immensely deep the love of God is for you, And as you fall just as much in love with him 
as he is in love with you, you will find that you no longer want to do the things that displease him. Thirdly, when you learn who Christ is, you really learn that you cannot change without him. Those things that you do that you know you shouldn't do and don't even want to do, it is the grace and power of God that will help you change. You can get as many self-help books as you want to. You can go see a counselor. You can get on medicine to help you get from the other thing, the addiction. You can, you can do all of these worldly things, but I promise you, because I tried it and I know that it is the power of God that will transform you and take the appetite out of your mouth. When it comes to sexual sin, God, I thank you that you made me sexual. But until you send me my husband, until you send me my wife, will you please take these desires and put them away? Because I only want to serve you. Because I only want to bless you. Because I only want to honor you. And it don't matter if you have kids and have multiple kids. You can make that choice at any time. Just because what you did yesterday doesn't mean you have to keep on doing it. And that's what the enemy wants you to think. Well, you've been doing it. You're here now. But don't you know that it is God who will snatch you out of a pit quickly to turn your life around? You know why you shouldn't cuss? Because blessing and cursing can't come from the same lips. There's life and death in the power of the tongue. So all the, you know what they say? I learned this as a young kid. They say when you cuss a whole lot, it's because it means you don't have the words to say what you're actually trying to say. And so you curse and you say all these curse words because you can't find the words. But let me tell you, when I started to get with the Lord, he started to help me understand what I was thinking and what I was feeling. And I began to be able to take, because I used to have, I could get you real good, slice you up real nice. But the Lord had to take my tongue and tame my tongue because he wanted me to speak life over others. He wanted to to speak life over my situation. He wanted me to speak life over my life and my daughter's life and my husband's life. But I couldn't do that with a foul tongue. So it wasn't me who stopped cussing. It wasn't me who stopped smoking weed. It was him who helped me do that. Because those addictive behaviors don't just leave on their own. Whenever you leave one addictive behavior, I promise there's another one lurking, ready and waiting for you to take it on. I I became addicted to Jesus. I don't want nothing more than I want him. And even sometimes I still wrestle. I still wrestle with stuff because I have not fully arrived. But like pastor told, he told us that we got to press forward to the goal, to the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ. We continue to press forward. And every time you clean up one area, he's going to be like, great, on to the next. And you're going to be like, come on, God. I just got over that. And he's going to move you on to the next thing. Why? Because he has purpose for you. And he has things that he needs you to do. And he has a way that he wants to use you. But he can't use you if you're still broken. So... I already told you who Christ is. He is love. This here place is God's house of hope, healing, and wholeness. The purpose of this house is to introduce you to the love of God. It is so that you would learn to put your hope in him because he's the one who could change your situation. Pastor can't change it. I can't change it. Nobody in this room can change it. We can pray alongside you. We can tarry with the Lord for you. But the only person who can really change your life is God. This is a place where the love of God will heal you, where you can come to know him as Jehovah Rapha. We don't expect the people who come in the door to be whole and have it all together. And maybe, you know, sometimes God will send somebody who's got it together because he wants to use them in some way to help others. But the majority of people who walk through that door, they're not going to have it together. They might be caught up in sin and they don't need judgment. They need love. They need a word of encouragement to say it won't always be like this. 
Keep trusting in him. Keep leaning on him and watch your life change. And even more, this is the place where people become whole because of the love of God. It's the love of God that takes the broken pieces and knits them back together so that you can be whole again. The song says, what can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Without the blood, we don't really stand a chance at really experiencing wholeness. So I, I, I know this to be true. We don't always get the love thing right because we're still people. And, you know, we've been broken in certain areas and we have things that we have to unlearn. But one thing I know always is that God always gets love right. And so, brother, if you could give me a little something there. As I prepare to close, I mentioned to you that we're going to be launching the young adult ministry. We're going to also continue to build out our youth ministry. And this call that God has given me, it may or may not be unique to me. But essentially what he told me is that he was going to anoint me to carry the secrets of others without judgment. He began to reveal to me many secrets that I already know about others and that I've just covered in prayer. And he then challenged me to share my own secrets as a demonstration that you can trust me. The Bible tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. These things that I held on to as secrets are all part of my testimony. And even in this moment, as I delivered this message, God broke the spirit of shame off of my life. And because he's done that for me now, I know for sure that he can do it for you. No more living in shame. No more living in bondage of what you've been into or what you haven't been into. But I would like the opportunity for any of our young adults or anyone who is interested for me to pray with you. We're going to pray right here at the altar. Because I believe that we need to learn to leave things in the presence of God and to walk away with his peace. So if everyone could just stand with me before we, before we come to the altar, I understand that there may be somebody in here who maybe just doesn't know Christ. You've heard about him. Maybe you've learned about him as a judgmental God or however you've been taught who he was. Maybe you've learned about him as a sometime God. I only call him when I need something. If I don't need nothing, I just do my life without him. Until I need something, then I go to him. No. God is love always. And God desires us to be in his presence. And every eye closed, there's someone in here who hasn't accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. You could just put your hand up and put it down. Maybe you've been living a life away from him and you're like, you know what? I just want to in this moment solidify and make sure that I know that I know that I know and I want to rededicate my life to him I want to do a fresh surrender I want to just let him know that in this moment that God I've heard the message of your love amen so I'll, I've seen the hands that have gone up I'm gonna ask that we all just pray this prayer together father God in the name of Jesus thank you for your love Thank you for your grace and mercy. God, we invite you in our hearts to, well, to dwell there, to clean us, to mold us, to shape us. Fill us now with your spirit and help us to live right. Thank you for being one that we can trust with all our secrets. In Jesus' name, amen. So the altar is open for anybody who would like to come and receive prayer. I really want to pray for the young adults. So if y'all are willing, if y'all not shy, too shy to come.
somebody love though the tears may fade of you and you show me Jesus what it really means what it really means what it really means to love a word that comes and goes the few people really love though the tears may fade away I'm so glad your love will stay cause I love you and you show me Jesus what it really means what it really means you love me when I should have died you love me I never know why you love me is a mystery me shall prosper me shall prosper it won't work God will do what he said he will do and stand by his word it will come true Man, share prosper. It won't work. No hope. Armed against me. Share prosper. Praying, 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 praying. Come on, this is what we've been praying for. The men of God to be stirred up in their spirits. For the power of God to be upon them. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for the way that you're moving in this atmosphere. We thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the power and authority that rests in us to decree and declare your word in the earth. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, 
for your love that breaks the shackles of sin. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, for your love which makes the enemy have to leave. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would send the enemy packing and camp clean would leave that everything unclean would leave and that lord god what would be left is your presence what would be left is your power god in the name of jesus every spirit of shame every spirit of confusion let it be broken off your people in the name of jesus god we rebuke the spirit of judgment that tries to leave your people fearful and afraid of coming into the house of god to transform us from the inside out father god i thank you god even for these men lord god that lord god you would build them up to be mighty men of valor that father god in the name of jesus you would allow the spirit of david to rest on them that they would become worshipers that they would become those who jump and shout and dance for Christ. That they would become those who understand the word of God. Who pray over their lives. Who pray over their families. Who pray over their Everything unclean has to go. They have to be loose now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the oil. We thank you for the oil. The oil of joy that you give us for mourning. We thank you, Father God. We pray and we speak your deliverance now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Okay, great. We're going to let them continue to minister. Um, uh, I would like to introduce to some, reacquaint others. If you've been a member of Siloam, uh, then many of you know this young man. So I want to introduce you to Colton, Colton Spearman. Amen. Amen. Elder Nicole talked about mountaintop experiences. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm so thankful for the translucency of this brother. And I ask each of you to pray for him. I ask you to pray for Brother Victor. In fact, I ask you to pray for every man here. I ask you to pray. This is what church is and what it looks like when it's done well. And if you want to know really in detail, I would ask that you go back to Acts. Read Acts chapter 2 particularly 40, verse 42 to the end, if you really want to know what a healthy, well-balanced, loving church is. Brother Colton, it's going to happen, but um, God has something more for you. I know that you, you know that. The beauty of it is, is when he starts to answer that cry, that prayer, but you're not going to do it built alone. Is that right, Siloam? Is that right, Siloam? This is your family. They've always been your family. Is that, is that right? This is God's house of hope, healing, and wholeness, and I can tell you personally that it's been done in my life, continues to be done in my life, that of my wife and that of our children, and I can say with confidence and with concern, with full sincerity and honesty that you will experience that as well if you want it. So we have a lot more to share with you, um, but welcome to Siloam Baptist Church, your family, God's house of hope, healing, and wholeness. the Lord. Can we give God some praise and worship? Because he's so worthy of our being. For all my young adults, I want you to save the date, December 12th. We're going to meet. We're going to have a little mixer, you know, some food, fellowship, and we want to tell you more about the young adult ministry. So save, save that date. December 12th. 18 to 34, don't y'all old heads show up now. We love y'all, but this for the 18 to 34, okay? Father, we are grateful and we are very thankful for what you have uh, showed us today. God, I'm grateful because you, you're answering a prayer of mine. I thank you, God, because you are God, and beside you there is nobody else. Father, I pray now that you would bless our next activity. This would leave from the sanctuary, going to the Lord Auditorium. God, bless all that you keep doing. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, who is Jesus the Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Let all of God's children say amen, say amen, and amen. Let's go downstairs. <laughs>